Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will analyze the cascode amplifiers in the presence of an output load. So, in the previous lectures, we said that for a cascode amplifier to give us good gain, to get good gain out of a cascode amplifier, we need the load resistance to be greater than or within the order of the output resistance of an unloaded cascode amplifier. Now, the question is, what is the typical load resistances that a cascode amplifier will normally see? So, unless in some very rare applications, in most of the cases, a cascode amplifiers, it's used for very high gains, uh, it's used in very high gain amplification. It's normally used as an intermediate or the first stage of high gain amplification. So typically, it will see the gate of a MOSFET, the next stage MOSFET, normally. Okay. So it means the load resistance will actually be infinity. So it's at low frequencies, it's just a capacitive load, so it's going to be infinity. So then where do we actually worry about, why do we have to worry about load resistance if it's going to be infinity? The load resistance of a cascode comes in the form of the resistance of the current source. So we need a current source to bias a cascode amplifier and this current source, there is no ideal current source, will have a finite output resistance and that will act as a load resistance. Now a current source, if you recall, a MOSFET, for example, I can have a PMOS device biased in saturation region and that can behave as a current source. Okay, But we know the resistance of this PMOS current source is going to be R0, I will call it ROP as the resistance of this PMOS current source. Okay, So that is the load resistance that we are talking about. So to have a good gain out of a, for example in this case an NMOS input cascode amplifier, the load resistance, the load or the load current source will be realized using PMOS. That load also should be a cascode load. Okay, So you should have two transistors like this connected this way. Now how do you realize such current sources? What are the design issues in such current sources? We will talk about it uh, when we discuss the current sources and references when at a much later stage. So at this point, we can see that if I use two such devices, then the, the resistance that the, the combined uh, impedance of the two devices is going to be much higher than a single device. Okay, So we can apply a similar result that we applied for a NMOS device, for a PMOS as well. So if you want to find the output resistance seen at here, output resistance offered by the current source which is realized using two PMOS devices. The expression for that will be, and I'll, I'll write it in terms of GM3 and GM4, it's going to be RO3 plus 1 plus GM3 RO3 into RO4. So if you recall, I said uh, you can you can see this N, this PMOS device, this PMOS device here, device 3 can be seen as a source degenerated device with a source degeneration resistance of value R04. So the resistance seen here, I said uh, the exact expression is given by this expression, but we can approximate it to simply A times A is A being the intrinsic gain of this device which is GM3 RO3 times RS. RS is the resistance we connect at the source terminal. So that will be RO4. We can approximate this if your RS is greater than 1 by GM3. Okay, It has to be greater than 1 by GM of this device. And which is true for this case, RO4 is generally greater, at least it's, if I assume the device GMs and ROs are equal, the two devices, 4 and 3 devices, GMs and ROs are equal, then obviously RO4 is going to be much greater than 1 by GM3. So I can simply approximate its resistance to be equal to GM3, RO3, RO4. So again, I'll make another assumption, all the ROs and GMs are same. So, and I'll call GMP as the GM of the PMOS device, then it's going to be GMP ROP square. This is going to be the output resistance of the PMOS load. Okay, so this device is what we call as a cascode current, uh, uh, sorry, a cascode, MOS am cascode amplifier with a cascode load. The load is also a cascode load. If I simply go for a regular PMOS load, okay, with one device acting as a current source, then the resistance is going to be R0 and that will act like a load resistance for the uh, cascode amplifier and it will reduce the gain significantly. So now we have uh, I've shown this equivalent circuit model for this cascode amplifier here. The GM is nothing but the GM of the first device, it's actually GM1. So GM is the GM1, GM of the first device shown in the figure. And R out is going to be R O two 
it's actually RO1 getting multiplied by intrinsic gain at the second stage which is GM2 RO2 okay and again I can make this approximation because your RO1 is greater than 1 by GM2 if this condition is valid then we can simply approximate the output resistance to be A times RS okay where RS in this case is R01 and A is GM2 RO2 so now uh, for simplicity of analysis I am going to assume the load resistance is GMP ROP square I am going to assume that GMP equals GMN so GM1 and GM2 are equal and that's equal to GM the NMOS and PMOS have both have same GMs in that case your output resistance is going to be GM R0 square load resistance is also going to be GM R0 square so if you see it's actually intrinsic gain times more than R0 itself okay so the actual expression for the gain is going to be minus GM into R0 parallel RL so it will be minus GM R0 the whole square by 2 okay so this is using the model for a gas code amplifier we can directly write this result we can also analyze this stage by stage okay so if I want to analyze this stage by stage so then I have a cascade of a common source and a common gate stage now the load of the common gate stage is actually GM R0 square so the input resistance of the common gate stage with the load resistance is actually given by 1 by GM approximately plus RL by A now the term RL by A here is actually GM R0 square by GM R0 so that's going to be R0 and that is obviously greater than GM 1 by GM so I can ignore it and just consider the resistance is approximately R0 so the first stage is going to see this is the common source stage it's going to see a load resistance of value R0 so the gain of the first stage will be minus GM into R0 parallel R0 so that will be minus GM R0 by 2 okay it will be reduced by half the first stage gain will reduce by 6 dB and that's because of the loading effect the second stage however it's a common gate configuration so if I apply an input here I'll call it VI1 as the input here now you're supposed to find the output for this second stage so if you recall the output resistance for a con common source configuration of common gate configuration if I'm driving it directly at the source with the zero source impedance is simply R0 and the load resistance is much larger than the output resistance right it's intrinsic gain times larger so I can assume the gain of this stage is approximately equal to the unloaded gain so it's actually unloaded gain 1 plus GM R0 times the loading effect RL by RL plus R out R R R out of CG the common gate configuration which is R0 so since your R0 RL is a intrinsic gain times higher than this so I can ignore I'll assume this factor is 1 close to 1 so the gain simply reduces to 1 plus GM R0 which I'm, again I'm going to approximate it to GM R0 so the second stage gain more or less remains the same it's it's, it's pretty good where we are losing the half if you see if you recall the gain expression it's GM R0 square by 2 okay the gain is reduced by half it's reduced by 6 dB and that reduction happens if you see stage by stage it actually happens at the first stage itself because the common source is going to see a reduced load resistance okay uh, previously when the RL was infinity it was seeing an infinite load resistance but now it will see a load resistance of value R0 with a cascode load with just a double cascode if I have just put two, two devices I am going to get R0 so the overall gain is simply minus GM R0 by 2 into GM R0 so it will be minus GM R0 the whole square by 2 okay the gain reduces by 6 decibels now we will analyze a little bit more complicated generalized uh, cascode amplifier so wherein we have n such devices for the cascode path so this is called the signal path where the signal current traverses here and flows here and this part will be the load this entire path will be the load okay so I have shown here two cascode amplifiers for the first amplifier it has a n stage cascode load the second amplifier has n plus one stage cascode load so what will be the difference in gain between the two stages so first stage we have already analyzed this uh, first stage so your load resistance is also equal to a power n minus 1 times r0 because it's an n stage cascode it's just an n stage cascode load is also an n stage cascode so i can simply assume it's a power n minus 1 times r0 okay so it gets r0 gets multiplied by the intrinsic gain and you have n set stages so you'll have n minus 1 times multiplication the multiplication happens n minus 1 times so then the gain is going to be RL parallel R out so in that case it's going to be a power n minus 1 R naught 
by 2 so that's rl parallel r out is half of it because both are equal times the intrinsic gain which is uh, times the transconductance with a minus sign is gm gm is the transconductance so gm r naught is again a a is simply gm r naught so you get this result so it will be the unloaded gain of an n stage cascode which is minus gm r naught the whole power n by 2 if i if i attach a cascode load to it i'm going to get by 2 6 db reduction in the second case i have n minus 1 stages i have totally n minus n plus 1 stages which means the load resistance is actually going to be a power n times r naught so there is one extra multiplication by a because there are n minus 1 stages there is one one extra multiplication but the output resistance is going to be simply a power n minus 1 times r naught because you have only n stage cascode okay the signal path sees n stage cascode but the load has n plus 1 cascode one stage more okay so you are going to get a minus 1 so if you see your load resistance is actually a times r out so it's actually greater than r out by a factor a by just adding one mos extra mosfet we could get this let's say see for example uh, we will always be limited by the supply voltage here how many devices we can stack it that's that's going to be decided by the supply voltage but right now i'm just assuming it is a theoretical problem and let's assume we can keep cascading as many as we can now i have chosen the load resistance as that it's a times the output resistance then rl parallel r out is simply going to be equal to a by a plus 1 times r out so it's going to be slightly smaller but since a is much greater than 1 it's going to be approximately equal to r out itself so then what we can show here is that your rl parallel r out that's what i've shown here it's approximately equal to r out itself so then if i multiply that with the transconductance the short circuit transconductance i'm going to get minus gm or not whole power n approximately so if you see i don't need to have an rl of infinity to get to to have the uh, i mean to get a gain which is equal to the unloaded gain of a cascode amplifier you just have to have up at least a times or by just adding one extra device one more device in the stack i can get almost very close to the unloaded gain of a cascode amplifier um, we can uh, i mean you can also do the analysis stage by stage uh, you will see some interesting results the factor half here if you see if you do a stage wise analysis you will actually see that the factor half here comes from the first stage okay the for the uh, if you see uh, when rl equals to r out you will see the factor half coming here in the first stage in the similar way when you try for the second case when you do a stage wise analysis stage wise analysis okay you will see that uh, the factor half will not come there you know even the first stage gain will be close to minus gm or not okay that's because of having the cascode uh, it, it's actually a slightly more than a cascode load okay it's one uh, one stage higher than the input stage i mean the the signal path stage now i uh, will also now finally discuss one particular problem what happens i am now trying to find the circuit shown here so that's it about analyzing a cascode amplifier with two with the different loads i have analyzed it now we'll go for an amplifier structure where we'll connect a very low load resistance a very low resistance to the drain of the first amplifier to the source between drain and source of the first stage amplifier okay so which is like i'm loading the first stage with a very low load resistance now what happens to the unloaded cask unloaded gain of this stage i'm just adding one resistance here in this case how does the gain get modified so to solve this problem you can all you can always solve it stage by stage so i'll first solve it solve it stage by stage if you see the first stage here we are having a resistance of value 1 by gm so the since your drain is open circuit here rl is infinity here your rl is infinity the resistance seen here will also be infinity so therefore the first stage will see only a load resistance of 1 by gm so gm by 1 by gm will be minus 1 the first stage gain will simply be minus 1 after that it's just a cascade of n common gate stages and since the load resistance is infinity at every stage the input resistance will be infinity so you can simply multiply the gains of the n stages n minus 1 stages so you'll get a gain of 1 plus gm or not whole power n minus 1 okay so that i can approximate it to minus gm or not whole power 
n minus 1. So I have to multiply with minus 1 for the first stage and 1 plus GMR naught whole power n minus 1 for the remaining n minus 1 stages. So the overall gain is going to be mi minus of GMR naught the whole power n minus 1. Okay. It looks like the first stage is suppressed. The gain of the first stage is fully gone. We can also analyze this using the short circuit transconductance and output, out, output resistance method. So first we have to find the short circuit transconductance. To find the short circuit transconductance, what should we do here is that we should short this node, the output node to ground and then measure the current flowing through that. Now the instant you short circuit the output node, if you recall from the previous lectures, we said the input resistance seen at the second stage will be 1 by gm. Okay, so since RL is 0, there is no contribution due to RL, it will be just the uh, input resistance of a common gate with drain shorted. So that will be 1 by GM. So now you have, when you apply VI here, you have two currents, uh, you have a current GM VI coming here and it sees two parts, one through this resistor and the other through the device 2. So whatever current enters device 2, it is the same current that is going to flow through the output as well. So you just have to find what is the current entering device 2. Now as it enters the drain of the first stage, it sees two paths, one path with an impedance 1 by gm, other path also with an impedance 1 by gm. So the current will split equally, will split equally. So you will have gm vi by 2 flowing in this direction and gm vi by 2 flowing in this direction. So the transconductance is going to be, um, so I have shown the direction wrong uh, in the sense it will be with, a, I, I should write it as minus gm vi by 2. So minus gm vi by 2 flowing in the upward, the direction of current is downwards okay it's towards the source of the first device so you'll get a transconductance effective transconductance as minus gm by 2 and for the as far as the output resistance is concerned the first device you have r not shorting 1 by gm so gate is grounded so the overall resistance of this combination will simply be 1 by gm okay so now i have the first device which is the second device will see a will see a source resistance of value 1 by gm now if you recall, I said when you are finding the emitter degenerating resistance, so you can use the result 1 by gm times A only if the source resistance is less than 1 by gm of the upper device. But that does not hold here. So we have to use the exact expression and the exact expression being 1 by gm plus 1 by gm. So you will actually see, I am sorry, so you will actually see 1 by gm, so you will actually see 1 by gm plus, so it will actually be R02 which is R0 in this case plus 1 by gm times the intrinsic gain, so which is gm R0. So you will actually get an expression of 2 R0, so that will be the resistance seen from the first stage. Okay. After that, now that 2 R0 is now greater than 1 by gm of the uh, of the stage following that. Okay, so two or not is actually greater than the uh, one by gm of the stage following that. So from the from the stage three onwards, you can apply that approximation. But the first stage, when you are applying the trying to find the source degenerated re output resistance of a store degenerated MOSFET, you'll have to use an exact expression. So you'll actually get two or not at the drain of the second stage, and at the drain of the third stage, you will get two or not times a, and so on. So finally, the output resistance is going to be 2 R0 times A power n minus 2. Okay. So this factor 2 R0, uh, we have actually lost A here and that is because of the first stage. The first stage, the resistance is just 1 by gm. So now, the overall output resistance is going to be, uh, the overall output resistance is simply 2 R0 into gm R0 whole power n minus 2. So if I multiply that with gm, uh, by 2, I am going to get minus of gm r0 whole power n minus 1. So this looks like one stage gain is completely lost. We have lost one stage gain. In fact, how do we see that? We can see that because your transconductance reduces by a factor of half and your output resistance is reduced here. See, typically, normally in an open circuit, uh, in, a, in the absence of 1 by gm, this load here 1 by gm, the output resistance is a power n minus 1 times r0. But now it is a power n minus 2 times 2 r0. So the output resistance has reduced by a factor of 2 by A. Okay, So when you multiply both, the overall gain reduces by a factor of 1 by A. So that is how uh, you can see the effective output resistance 
reduces by a factor of 2 by a okay and the effective transconductance reduces by a factor of half so the overall gain reduces by one intrinsic gain so uh, that's it about cascode single stage cascode amplifiers in the next class i'll probably discuss about uh, the body bias effect and how to model them in single stage amplifiers